Listen, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I don't know if Larris did anything that I wouldn't have done. This is for heaven. Um... Listen, there's so many things that have happened since the last time I've done an episode, which was episode seven. Episode seven. Um, I've done quite a bit of content on that that seemed to chart well on the channel, so I'm just going to try to do more House of Dragon. Um content i didn't do any episode eight stuff because i was lazy but also i think episode eight was a fantastic episode uh that was also pretty to the point i don't think there was too many things that were actually there was one thing that i'm actually discussing right now that i know had some underlying meaning and uh, it was touched on again this episode maybe i could do that but i don't know i don't know book material so i, I can't i don't know what to put it bluntly Helena is talking about something that's more than just the, the fucking dragon coming out of the damn uh, basement. But I don't know what it is. So I don't know if I can do a video on it. If you want me to theorize what it is, I can do that, I guess. But it's more than just a damn dragon coming out of the basement. That's not what she was talking about. Um, what I did want to do was something that was, <laughs> I think was really well done. And I think needs to be talked about more. And is what they've done with Laris. Laris Strong, the... I guess as best as we know, the last remaining member of uh, the strong house. Um, so, as we've kind of come to know Laris originally, he is just kind of this almost eternally downtrodden, uh, really, what, quaternary, quintenary character that just kind of moped about in the back, seemed to be kind of brooding, uh, but also cute, always seemed to pay attention, always had his eyes open, and... We get like just a deluge of emotions when we have this weird looking guy kind of try to line himself with a younger Allison Hightower uh, and try to provide her information about, I believe it was, if I remember correctly, about Renera being found uh, outside with the. So I think his information kind of gave a foundation to that stuff. She didn't want to believe it from her dad, if I remember correctly. All I remember is that he kind of confirmed some of what happened with that whole scene of. Uh, Renera going out there and having a ball with the balls of Damon Targaryen. Um, and after that, we get really I think the f first moment past that that we get a relevancy from him is him talking to uh, Allison, grown Allison, Olivia Cook, as a confidant. And we kind of get into the uh, Flash Forward episode with that being the case, him having been a confidant to her for a while it seemed and she kind of confides in him kind of her thoughts about uh basically his dad almost being about to say the truth about the situation and then him leaving before he could or just kind of refuse to commit to it and then one one big moment i don't know how this stacks up chronologically i want to say it's them having a discussion about her being disappointed about all this stuff. And then they go on the ship. And then this is a huge moment. I don't know how this stacks up chronologically between them having that initial discussion and him having his father and his brother killed. But this is the biggest part. So they're on the boat and they're going to somewhere. I forgot where. They're going on the boat and Laris walks up to Allison who's like looking out in the water just kind of seems to me to be disgusted really with everything that happened so maybe this is after they were killed and then you know he's like oh you know i did this and this blah blah blah, blah. um and then she's like yeah that's pretty fucking crazy but you know i still do consider you a friend you know i think that uh i can definitely trust you to you know execute whatever i need later down the road you know i think that you'll actually be a confidant or whatever like he pretty much proposed the idea that like hey i think that I think it's from a different scene now at this point. Because this is... The one I'm thinking now at this moment is from when he reveals to her that he had the killing happen. And then he's like, I trust that you'll see me as a friend or whatever when the time comes. There's also a moment on the boat where she confirms to him... I think this is after. She confirms to him that, yeah, I do view you as a friend after all. I think she de decompresses after everything that happens. I want to say she talks to Otto Hightower. And then she's like, okay fuck he's still an ally at the end of the day 
And instead of choosing to reject him, she accepts him as a confidant as a, and like, as a continued friend, quote-unquote. At least she literally refers to him as a friend, if I remember correctly. And he looks to be very uh, happy with that moment. So that was all in, what, I guess like episode six or so at this point. Um, I don't think he commits any other massive fuckery at that point until we kind of get to this episode, episode nine where this is a Team Green episode, and in it, we get this conversation where Laris has basically been politicizing behind the scenes for a minute. He kind of comes out to talk to Otto. Otto, who, for all intents and purposes, is one of many uh, little finger adjacents that we kind of have, and Laris being another one, I think that fits in that bill, maybe more of a Varys than a Laris, uh, or a Varys than a Littlefinger, uh, he comes up to Otto and is like, you know, this is happening, and you know, I kind of know where the white worm is, and then, you know, Otto's like, whoa, this guy, fucking scary, he kind of has connections. Yeah, I see you've been talking to my daughter a lot, and he's like, yeah, I don't see why this conversation with your daughter can't be beneficial to you too, and then Otto's like, so it's like, I kind of, I feel like it's game recognizing game almost, and right after that, Allison talks to Otto. She's like, well, you know, you can't. I, I have... I don't know if it's right after that, but it's sometime after that. It's like, I have the boy Wonder. He's mine. I control him. Because they both... Otto recognized that... Otto's like pretty much like the, the the lightning rod of recognizing a good tactical move. And he like gives Allison props for finding Eamon or Aegon before he could... Really, I guess he found Aegon first, but... She ended up with Aegon at the end of the day. So, he's like, yeah, you know, I, I peep game. And, you know, he starts talking about some more political shit. And she starts talking to him. He's like, ah, oh, well, this is how it's going to play out. So, after that happens, then she goes back to her, her keep. And she sees Laris there. And Laris was just sitting there. And she's like... But she's like, eh. Yeah. So, he starts teasing some of the information that I'm guessing he also presented to Otto guessing maybe to lightly uh but in deeper like he didn't go into this little death study he's just pretty much like yeah i know who did what and you're going to have to take off the head and he reveals that there's a network of spies uh it comes from the white worm uh there's a web uh but they go and rate for the information and this is what allison knows it's not even communicated it's the coldest shit it's not even communicated verbally but it's such an eerie scene cinematography wise. Like the, the way the camera focuses on certain aspects is so crazy. We get like his um his walking cane, and now it has the B like emblazoned into the stick. Like it's like you can tell like, it was like there was a stick that was molded with an emblem. I forgot which one was the strong emblem. I don't know if that was a B or not. I did, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a B because the B was on the um uh, the guards that he had killed the Strongs. So I think he now has the B as his kind of logo or whatever. Uh, so the B was like added into the stick after the fact. We get that. We have like these cold scenes where he's kind of just looking at her kind of weird and shit like that, which that doesn't really mean anything because when is Lair is not looking at somebody weird. And then we also get a moment where for some reason we focus on his foot, which we all know he's a club foot, but like he has this fucking like almost armor on his foot now. Like it's like a different shoe. It's like, almost like a cast, kind of, like the way you have an like ankle cast, uh, in terms of its kind of, um, general shape, like mold, but on the outside, it's of, like, armor. So we get a foot shot there. I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird, because we already know what he looks like, foot-wise. So he sits down, he's talking to her, and, he, you know, he kind of presents this as being a, uh, it's a price for his information. Like, he puts it down like that. And Allison takes her shoes off. It's like, first, it's, it's a three-part thing. It's like, first, take shoes off. I think she put, no. No, she sat down, and she kind of slips out of her shoes, and then throws her feet on the, the, the damn thing after he kind of starts leaning into the information that he acquired about the network of spies that her dad got access to. So then she throws her feet on thingy the the little table or whatever and at this point he's like starts talking more and more and then she starts leading like he's like yeah you know there's a network of spies your dad has access to it there's some guys that are also in the red keep that actually 
people that you're very close with. And he kind of starts, you know, starts rolling it back a little bit in terms of how much, you know, he's saying. He kind of like starts giving like this little look, you know, like it's, you know, it's a little bit more that needs to be said, but it's a little more that needs to be paid too. Uh, so then she kind of gives like this, oh, shit. And then she like takes her socks off and then throws her feet back on there. And he just starts going. Like, he's just like, fuck, you can tell at this point. He's just. And then he's just like, fucking just starts like letting it all out, you know, everything, everything. And then she's like, I trust you can handle this. And then he's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, if it needs to be handled, I can handle it. And then she turns around, kicks her feet up, lifts her dress up a little bit, and he just goes to town. Um, I don't even want to describe it any more definition than that, but she just looks away. You get the the final shot. I mean, you get a you get a, like a really, really interesting shot of just him like kind of grabbing at his thing. Um, and then the final shot in that scene is just him uh, going just or her kind of looking away, almost disgusted, but just understanding that like this is this is what it is like this. It's the price you got to pay, and it's it's such a to me it's such a touching moment because it's showing just how much she's progressed in the Game of Thrones. Like understanding what has to be done, she's gotten to a point where like she just there's not even real emotion display. Like, she is clearly disgusted by the act, which we've seen Allison just do things that she's disgusted by. Um, the Viserys moments with young Allison, we got that a thousand times over, but. We now get to this point where, like, she just almost, you know, mercilessly just does it, you know, without vocals needing to be said or maybe I can do this instead of doing something this disgusting. She just gets it done. Like, she knows the price of what things cost now. So it's more, it's almost as much of an Allison moment as it is a Laris moment. But I think it's relevant for Laris because we clearly see that this guy now uh, is more than just a, a little finger parallel was doing things for power like this this girl that we thought was just this noble freaking honorful honor you know just real noble individual that's playing by ethics and, and a code we see now that, that that's gone like that my fucking google home many just <sighs> anyway um so Tend to say that we get to this point now where I don't know if you need confirmation at this point, but if you need to really see that Allison is playing the Game of Thrones as deeply, it's just about anybody. Like obviously, still, still, we still do have this back and forth balance between what she thinks is acceptable and what her weird, twisted code of ethics just won't accept. It's, it's becoming more and more... It's actually a really good storytelling. But it's becoming more and more gray. Like, oh, I'm not wanting to have Rhaenyra killed. But that's because I now am back friends with Rhaenyra. If you asked Alicent about this, I don't know, an episode ago, like the beginning of the last episode, she would have been perfectly okay probably getting Rhaenyra killed. But because the way that episode ended, with them becoming partially friends again, not okay with it. So... It's a beautiful scene, her sitting there just kind of both disgusted and accepting of what it takes. Just almost poker face, but at the same time you can kind of just see the emotions being held at bay. It's just a beautiful scene. That's it for me, I guess, really about this. Uh, Laris is going to be a very dangerous character going forward, but I do think he's more than just a little finger parallel. He's not doing it just for power, in my opinion. There's clearly some... If you were living a real life here and kind of looking at this, you think the lame motherfucker that never had a voice in a table now has, and never had no bitches, now he has the baddest bitch in the land giving him the time of day. And because of that, I think that even though he wants to be a successful nigga, I think it means something to him to impress that broad whenever he gets a chance to. So I think that the storytelling is now at this point trying to display that, you know, maybe 75% he wants more power. But 25% of that is Allison's only woman, even as a girl, that gave him the time of the day. He could probably get almost any girl that he wanted at this point, probably. But 
Ah, shit. How many you gave him to Tom and Dick to this point that we've seen? Yeah, that's all I'm saying. I don't know how far this goes. I don't know if we ever get to a point where the power matters more to him than her feet. I don't know. We'll see.